Uh, so let's begin. Last time we studied binary relations. Uh, please switch off your microphone. If you don't want, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, last time we studied binary relations and uh, various connected concepts like uh, composition, the converse relation, the image of a set under a relation, and so on. And now uh, we want to apply our binary relations to some uh, real uh, uh, not, not, not that real, but more real than previously, to, to some task uh, concerned with uh, modeling real mathematics. We know that in mathematics uh, there is a very important notion of function. What's function? Informally speaking, you know that function is some law of correspondence or something like that. But uh, our tendency is to replace all this uh, vaguely defined notions by uh, exact set theoretic definitions. So, we want to model function uh, using binary relation machinery. How is it possible to do that? The main idea is, of course, as follows. We will identify every function with its graph. You know, say that sine uh, has some graph which you may draw on a real plane. So the graph the graph of sine is a binary relation to the set of uh, points in two-dimensional plane. So sine uh, is just a subset of A squared, the set, a set of uh, ordered pairs, a set of ordered pairs. So we know, say, uh, that... Uh, the value of sine at point zero is just zero. So uh, we want to say that uh, zero, zero belongs to sine. So every function uh, will be uh, expressed as a set of uh, pairs of the following form, argument, value. This is the main idea. Identify a function with its graph and then uh, make the following observation. A graph is a subset uh, of uh, a Cartesian product. So in this case, as sine is a function from reals to reals, the graph is, uh, its graph is a subset of a real plane. But now let's do some formal work. In order to do it, I will need uh, some uh, more special classes uh, of binary relations. Okay, let's give a definition. Let A be a binary relation between some sets A and B. I say that R is functional, not yet function, but functional. R is functional if and only if uh, for every x, y, and z, if x are y and x are z, then y equals z. What does it mean? That means that if you have, whenever you have uh, two arrows with the same starting point, Two arrows with uh, the same beginning must have uh, the same ending. So they should be the same. It's not possible to have an A, uh, two pairs uh, that share the starting point, but uh, whose uh, endings differ. 
that's not possible so our relation is uh, so to say not splitting you cannot split one point x uh, to two or more different points y and z there is no more than one arrow uh, going from each point is it clear yes okay and now uh, we want to consider the dual notion uh, r is injective injective like in injection uh, for each x y and z if y are x and z are x then the same conclusion y equals z and now we see that uh, here we have uh, two points with the same end two points going to the same x from some y and z and we say that it is not possible that uh, such y and z are distinct so if they are distinct that's not possible this uh, is only possible uh, when y and z are the same so our relation is so-called not gluing it uh, does not glue y and z together it's not possible to have so no more than one incoming arrow at each point is it clear Is it clear or not? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. But what, what, what if I change the direction of both arrows in this picture? What should I obtain? This one. Yes. No. So, so we see that if uh, uh, formula this is equivalent to the following y are conversed uh, x and z are conversed x so the same as here but just for a conversed what does it mean uh, that means that uh, the following statement holds let's call it lemma lemma one uh, R is functional if and only if uh, R conversed is uh, which? Equal to. Equal to what? Not, of course. Injective. Of course, injective. This condition. Uh, is equivalent to this one, but for the converse relation. Is it clear? Yes. Look at this one. It is the same as this one, but for a converse. So, R is functional if and only if uh, the converse relation is injective. And, of course, likewise, R is injective if and only if the converse relation is functional okay uh, and now let's introduce two more classes of uh, binary relations r is total for some set z if and only if for every x from z, there exists some y, so that x are y. What does it mean? That means that uh, from every point of z, uh, the 
there is some outgoing arrow. So there is an arrow uh, starting at every point of X. At every point of X uh, of Z begins some arrow. So here, totality means that there is at least uh, at least one arrow from each X. And functionality means that there is uh, at most one arrow. Combining these two, we would obtain that there is exactly one arrow uh, going from each point of some Z. But uh, we shall uh, come back to this observation in a short time. Okay. But now let's introduce uh, the dual notion of surjectivity. R is surjective. For Z, R is subjective. If and only if, uh, for each Y from Z, there exists X such that uh, X are Y. So what does it mean? That means that every point in Z is the ending point of some arrow. So at each point, we have at least one incoming arrow. Clearly, these two are dual to each other. If R is total for Z, the converse is surjective. Is it clear? If you change the direction here, you will obtain just this uh, picture, but for the converse relation. Is it clear? Sorry, this time Z is all of the elements in the right side, all of the elements, uh, for, for example, uh, such as Y? Z is some fixed set, whatever, whatever you want. Is, is in the right side? Uh, so, in the right side of what? Uh, for uh, X, R, Y. All X, R, R, Y. Ah, I see. I, 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 I see. I see. My drawing is uh, somehow flawed. Okay. Uh, for each Y, but, but, but no, no. Everything is okay. What, what don't you like? There is an incoming arrow uh, at each Y. Oh, yes. For yes. each Y, there exists X. Yes, yes. So everything is okay. You, sh you should rename them, of course. But uh, the names, the names uh, don't matter. The main idea is that totality means that there is uh, an out out outgoing arrow uh, at each point. And here we say that there is an incoming arrow. Okay. So uh, the second statement is... Uh, also quite clear, R is total for Z, if and only if the converse relation is uh, surjective for the same Z. And of course, R is surjective for Z, if and only if the converse is total. Is it clear? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay. And now, given these four properties, let's uh, learn them, the, 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 their uh, connections to each other. First of all, some example. Let A consist of the following pairs. Let's draw it. Okay, there is an arrow from 0 to 1. There is an arrow from 1 to 1. There is an arrow from 0 to 2. And from 3 to 4. Assume that we have uh, such pairs in our R. 
Is this uh, relation functional? Is it functional? Functional means uh, not splitting. No more than one arrow from each point. Is it functional? No. No. Uh, no. Why? Where uh, uh, the functionality is broken? Uh, zero, 01 and zero, 02. Well, of course, it's not functional. We have that uh, zero, 01 belongs to R and uh, zero, 02 belongs to R, but of course, 1 and 2 are distinct. Is it injective? Is it so that we have uh, at most one incoming arrow? No. So where is the problem? One uh, makes problem. Of course. One or of one. Of course. From one, uh, from zero to one, and from one to one, we have uh, uh, the arrows. Yet zero does not equal one so we may say that r is not injective is uh, this relation surjective or total of course it depends on uh, the choice of this set z in general every relation is total for some set for which one Every relation is total for some set. For which one? Empty? Uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course. But one more. One Simpleton? more. No, no. Uh, for empty set, it is uh, uh, total as for each X from the empty set is always true. For the domain? The domain, of course, of course, of course. Do you remember what uh, the domain is? The domain, let uh, I uh, be uh, some relation from uh, between A and B. So the domain of A is exactly the set of all axes such that there exists some Y so that X are Y. So... The domain is, by definition, the set of all uh, first coordinates of pairs from R. The set of all uh, such points where from uh, an arrow uh, goes. So, uh, every relation, for every binary relation, uh, it is total. For its domain, that's quite clear. And uh, likewise, A is surjective for what? For which set? For its range. What is range? The range of A is the set of all ending points. So to every uh, to every uh, point from range, some arrow comes. It is quite clear, isn't it? Is this observation? Is this remark clear? Yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that means that uh, our A is. Uh, Total for every subset of its domain. Say, uh, we may say that I is total for uh, the set uh, comprised of, say, 0 and 1. We have an uh, outcoming arrow at both points. So, uh, for 0 and 1, which is a subset of the domain. And the domain of A uh, consists of which points? The domain. 
Zero, one, and three. Of course. Zero, one, and three. And likewise, R is surjective. For, say, uh, one, two, and four. Because this set is exactly the range. Is it clear? Is it clear? Uh, can we say that it's also surjective for one and two, right? Of course, of course. For oh, okay. every subset of the range, clearly. I want to say exactly this thing. Clearly, uh, R is uh, total, is total for Z, if and only if Z is a subset of the domain. And R is surjective, R is surjective is surjective for Z if and only if Z is a subset of the range. So, but in general, we want to say that R is simply total or surjective. What does it mean? A convention. If R is a subset of uh, some A, times b, r is the relation between a and b, where a and b are fixed somehow, so we uh, do know them, we say uh, that uh, r is simply total, without specifying the set, it is simply total, if it is total, for A, and likewise, R is surjective if R is surjective for B. Is it clear, such a convention? If A and B are fixed, like some universe, Is it clear? Assume we are studying just relations on uh, the set of natural numbers. This relation is called total if it is uh, total for the set of all natural numbers. Is this idea clear? Yes. yes okay. Is. And now let's prove another useful yet very simple lemma. These properties... Uh, all these four properties, that is being total, surjective, functional, injective, are preserved under the composition. Okay, let Q be a relation between A and B, and R be a relation between B and C. We say that if Q and R are functional, Or the same for injective uh, or total. That is, uh, Q is total for A, R is total for B. Surjective. So uh, then, the composition is also functional. Or likewise, injective. Total, subjective. By the way, the composition uh, is uh, a relation between which sets? If Q is from A to B and R is uh, from B to C, then the composition
Don't you forget uh, what the composition is? The... From A to C. Of course. The composition is a set of all pairs connected by a two arrow paths, first by Q, then by R. Okay, so we want to say that functionality, injectivity, totality, and surjectivity are all preserved. Let's prove it. First, let's consider functionality. Assume that uh, Q and R are indeed functional. Assume that they are indeed functional. What do I want? I want to prove that this one is functional. But what does it mean that this one is functional? That means that if uh, if x, y, and x, z both belong to the composition, then I have to obtain what? Functionality means that if these two hold, then? Then? Mm, y equals yes. Y equals z. So uh, I want to prove this one from this two. Okay, let's try to do it. Okay. Uh, X, Y, and X, Z both belong to uh, to this composition. A, composition Q. What does it mean? By definition, this means that there exists some intermediate point U so that from X, it's possible uh, to go to U via a then from u uh y q to y and the second uh one means that there exists some v so that uh x r v and v q z do you agree Yes. Okay. And now let's see at these two. What do they mean? Taking into account that R is functional. U equals V. U equals V. So, but then with this two in view, I have that U, Q, Y, and U, Q, Z. Why U? Because Z, because U and V are the same. But, uh, you know, Q is also functional. Q is functional as well. So y equals that. Is it clear? Yes. So functionality is indeed preserved. Now let's prove that injectivity is preserved. In order to do that, I may apply lemma one. Okay. And avoid considering the particular elements. Uh, okay, assume that both Q and R are injective. So I want to prove that uh, this one, excuse me, this one is injective as well. Hmm. But Q and I are injective. Let's apply lemma one. Then the converses are functional. Mm -hmm. They are functional. But we uh, already know 
that if these two are functional, uh, then the composition, the composition is functional as well. We have just proved it. This one is functional as well. Is it clear? We have just proved that functionality is preserved under composition. But what is the composition of two converses? What is it? R O Q. No, the composition of two converses. It is the converse of inverse the composition order. in the inverse order. So it is this one. So this one is functional. But by lemma, by lemma one, by lemma one, if the converse of some relation is functional, the relation itself is injective. Is it clear? So I'm applying lemma one twice. Uh, is it possible to use the same as uh, lemma one to go the same as lemma one, not using other lemmas? Uh, where here? For for uh, injection. For inje for injectivity. Yes. Not using uh, any other lemmas like uh, for functionality. Uh, hmm. In fact, uh, uh, <laughs> I haven't got your question. So here I use uh, the previously proved fact uh, with lemma one. So you want. Uh, to get rid of what? Of lemma one or of this fact about functionality? Uh, yeah, this the about uh, functionality. So lemma one, uh, lemma one turns uh, the statement about injectivity into the statement about functionality. It is possible to uh, directly. Uh, uh, conduct all this, uh, this this whole argument without any reference to the previous one and then without any reference to lemma one for it uh, then it wouldn't be uh, needed uh, you uh, uh, in this case you just repeat something like that but change uh, x y and x z to of course y x uh, and uh, ZX. So, and then, uh, th th then you may repeat uh, this argument, almost repeated. In this case, uh, you won't need uh, lemma uh, one, no, of course, the fact about functionality. So, it's possible to construct a direct proof, but it is longer. And in general, we are encouraged uh, to reuse our results. So, thank you. And now, uh, let's consider totality. So, it's given that Q is total according to our uh, agreement, according to our convention. Q is total means that it is total for A. Q is total for A and likewise R is total for B. These are our assumptions. And I want then uh, to prove that uh, the composition is total. We know that the composition is uh, a subset of A times C, so it must be total for A. 
Okay. Let's prove it. What does it mean that Q is total for A? For each X from A, there exists some Y so that X, uh, Q, Y. But I know that Q is a subset of A times B. So I may uh, add here that Y is from B as every pair from Q belongs to A times B. So, and from this one, I know that for each Y from B, there exists Z, so that uh, Y uh, are Z. Okay. Uh, combining this two, okay, let's consider, let's consider an arbitrary area. an arbitrary x from a. For an arbitrary x from a, from this one, I know that there exists y from b, so that x, q, y. As this y belongs to b, that means that there exists some z, so that uh, y are z. So, I see that x, q, y, And y are z. By the definition of composition, that means that uh, the pair x z belongs to the composition. So for uh, every x, there exists some z, so that this pair belongs to the composition. For each x. From A, there exists some Z, so that the pair XZ lives in this composition. So this uh, means that uh, the composition is total for A. Is it clear? Could you uh, repeat the second part from uh, there exists some y in B? And X. There exists some y uh, in B, so Z, X, Q, Y. This is from our assumption. As Q is total. Uh, but uh, as this y, this very y belongs to B, I know that uh, from every point of B, uh, there comes some arrow marked uh, with R. There, there, there comes some R arrow. So there exist, there exist Z such that Y R Z. Is this clear? This step. Yes. Okay. So then, for some Z, I have that X uh, Q Y and Y R Z. So for some z, xz is an element of this composition. As this was true for an arbitrary x, that means that for every x, there exists such z, so that xz belongs to the composition. Any more questions? That's clear, thank you. And what about uh, surjectivity? In fact, uh, surjectivity is similar to totality. Or you may. You may apply lemma one, in fact, and re reduce the question of surjectivity to the question of totality. Because you know uh, that uh, a relation is uh, surjective if and only if the converse relation is total. Okay. But now let's go further uh, and uh, define a function. What is a function? So one of the most uh, important definitions is as follows. 
let A and B be some sets we say that F this is a set F is a function a function not functional this way but function uh, this time uh, but function F is a function from A to B a function from A to B if uh, and only if uh, the following three conditions hold. First of all, F is a binary relation between A and B. The second one, F is of course functional. If it is function, functional. It is functional and F is total for A, of course. So these two together mean that uh, there is exactly one arrow. Exactly one arrow from hx in a so functionality basically means that there is exactly one arrow uh, coming from every point of a and uh, as uh, an abbreviation we write f column a arrow b that means that f is a function from a to b is this definition clear mm, yes now let's see uh, some examples first of all something artificial but simple uh, zero one 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 two one and three four. Is it a function from which set to which one? It is a function from zero to one from it, uh, three, from its domain, where to? To its range, which is just one and four. Do you agree? Yes. Of course, it is functional. We have no splittings here. We have no splittings here. In fact, every functional relation is a function from its domain to its range or to whatever set uh, which uh, includes the range. So, for example, I may add here uh, 7 and 8. Why not? It is a function from this set to this one as uh, A b as our f is of course the subset of a times b is it clear and for each, each subset of a uh, what is subset of a like uh, 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 aha know. is it a is it a function from every subset of uh, a of course no uh, of, of course not because if you take say just uh zero and two it wouldn't be true f is not a subset of this uh, set of pairs as it has say pair one one which does not belong to this product okay I and now it. now let's uh, take a look at more natural examples say sign what is a sign 
sign is a set of uh, the sign is a set of uh, some pairs from reals to reals for for for, for, for uh, the set of all uh, uh, the sign is a subset of uh, pairs of two real numbers it is of course functional uh, because uh, from each From each uh, x, there is an arrow to uh, at most one y. So if you if you uh, construct such a vertical line, you will have at most uh, one intersection with the graph. So sine is the same as its graph. It is functional. So from each x, you have an arrow to just one y. There is a pair x zero y zero, which belongs to our graph. And also it is total as uh, for each x zero, you have uh, at least one y zero so you have exactly one arrow coming from each x from r we see that sign is a function from reals to reals but of course it's also a function from reals to this segment obviously the domain of sign is what? What is the domain of sign? Infinity to infinity. This is the set of all reals. Yes. You may call it uh, the interval of uh, minus infinity to plus infinity as they usually denote it in analysis. Yet this is, this is the set of all reals. And what is the range of sign? Minus one to one. This segment, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that every we know that every uh, figure on the plane is a binary relation. But of course, not every figure is a graph of a function. Assume that we have such thing. Is it a graph of a function? Let's mark it, uh, say, Q. No, it's not. Q is a subset of the plane, but it is not functional. Why? Because for this uh, line, I have more than one intersection with my figure. So I say the uh, I, I, I have that uh, y not not only y zero but y one which is uh, distinct these two pairs. They both belong to Q yet. These points are distinct. So it is not functional. I have uh, more than one uh, intersection with this vertical line. No, it is total. It is not total. If I take x1, then I see that there is no y so that x1, y belongs to Q. There is no Y, uh, no uh, pair to X1. No pair with such first coordinates. So Q is not total, that is for A. Neither it is functional, no, it is total. Is it clear? Clear. Mm -hmm. 
And what is the value of function? Uh, we want to give the following definition. We say that uh, y is the value of function f at the point x if and only if we write of course the, uh, y equals f of x uh, if and only if the pair x y belongs to f and this uh, notion is well defined because the value is indeed unique due to functionality so uh, if uh, x y belongs to f that means that uh, y equals f of x and if uh, x z belongs to f then z equals f of x and from this two uh, by the properties of equality, I would obtain y and z. This one is indeed true by functionality. By functionality, that means that y indeed equals z. So we have no contradiction. This one is well defined. Is it clear? Yes. So we say that sine of uh, pi over 2 equals, by the way, it equals what? 1. It equals 1. This is uh, the same as to say that, uh, that this pair belongs to sine. So we have defined every function is a set of pairs. Every function is a set. Everything is a set uh, as we want to have according to our ideas. Okay. And now uh, let's uh, prove some uh, easy facts about uh, functions. Lemma 3. Let f be a function from a to b and g be a function from b to c then the composition the composition of these two binary relations is a function from a to c and for every x from a the value of this composition function uh, at the point x equals what? G of f of x. Of course. So, in calculus, uh, you define the composition by this equation. But we have an independent definition for the composition of uh, any two binary relations. And we want just to check that our definition is in a good accord with uh, the definition from calculus. So, uh, if we define uh, the composition of two functions as the composition of two binary relations, then we will get uh, the same equation. Let's prove it. In fact, it is very easy. First of all, uh, why this one holds? That means that uh, G, uh, this composition is a subset of A times C, which is okay, of course, as F is a subset of A times B and G is a subset of B times C. But also that means that uh, this composition is functional. Why is it functional? Why the composition is functional? What do we know about uh, the functionality of a composition? By lemma 2. Of course, by lemma 2. 
as both f and g are functional they are functional and their composition is functional uh, and uh, likewise it is total by the same lemma too as f and g are total because uh, the properties of functionality and totality are preserved uh, under composition so this is indeed a function but what can one say about uh, its value let us see what does it mean that g is the value of this function here that means that uh, the pair xz uh, belongs to the composition that is for some y uh, the pair xy belongs to f and the pair yz belongs to g do you agree This is just by the definition of composition, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Uh, but this one means that uh, f of x equals y. So, I see the following. Uh, this means that, uh, I, and, and this one means that uh, z, z equals g of y. Okay, that means that uh, my z equals g of f of x. Is it clear? Clear. Okay. So... Uh, and another lemma is also very uh, oftenly used. Uh, it says that uh, two functions are equal if and only if their values at all points are the same. Let f be a function from a to b and g be a function from c to d. Then I say that two functions, the two functions f and g are equal if and only if the domains a and c are the same. And for every point of the common domain x, uh, f of x equals g of x. Let's prove it. In fact, if they are the same, of course, everything connected uh, to them uh, is identical. So it is trivial. If they are the same, we know that uh, equal sets behave identically. They are the same. So, and uh, for the... Uh, converse direction assume that indeed a equals c uh, and for each x from a f of x equals g of x i want to prove that f equals g in order to prove that two sets are equal it is uh, enough to prove that uh, Every set is included into the other one. Okay, let's prove that F is a subset of G. Assume that some pair XY uh, belongs to F. But what does it mean? That means that uh, first X belongs to A, of course, as X uh, as F is a subset of A, ti of a times B x belongs to a and also y equals f of x hmm from our assumption from our assumptions we know that then x belongs to c and also y equals g of x 
y equals g of x because f of x and y, uh, g of x are the same. So that means that our pair x, y belongs to g. Is it clear? Yes. So, we know that two functions are equal if and only if their domains uh, coincide and their values are pointwise same, are pointwise identical. Okay. Uh, so, the next one, uh, let's introduce some useful symbol b to the power a. This is by definition the set of all functions from a to b. Or formally, this is the set of all subsets of a times b, which are functions which are total and functional. Is it clear? A is a set. What is A? A and B are some sets, whatever. A and B are some sets, but what is B to the power A? By definition, b to the power a is a set of all uh, functions from a to b. So the set of all uh, subsets of a times b of the Cartesian product such that f is a function. Is it clear? Yes. I want just to... Uh, uh, group all these uh, functions together in one set. And as, a, as an example, let's explore the following set, b to the power nothing, to the, to the power of empty set. What is it? Now let's uh, do some intuitive work. What is it? b to the power empty set. Let's call uh, some analogy to our help. For example, for naturals. Uh, what does it mean? n to the power 0. 1. 1. So, probably this is uh, some set of one element. But which one? Okay. Singleton of empty set? Of course. That's it. Let's prove it. First of all, what does it mean that f is a function, uh, is an element of this set? That means that f is a function from the empty set to b. Hmm. But then f is a subset of this Cartesian product. What is the product of uh, the empty set with any set? What is the product? Empty set. Mm -hmm. So, you see that f is a subset of empty set. But which subset uh, empty set uh, has? Which subset does the empty set have? Empty. Only empty. So F is uh, the empty set. So if F is an element of this set, then it is empty. So this set is a subset of this singleton. But what about the converse inclusion? Is it indeed true that uh, the empty set is an element of this set. Is it indeed true that the empty set is a function from the empty set to be? 
namely, is it functional? Is empty set functional? No. It is. Why not? For every x, y, and z, if uh, x, y belongs to the empty set and x, z belongs to the empty set, uh, then x, uh, excuse me, then y equals z. Is it true or false? True. That's true, of course, because the assumption is false. And we know that if uh, the assumption is false in some implication, then the whole implication is true. So the whole thing is true. That's true. The empty set is, of course, functional. So this one is functional. And also, this one is total for which set? For the empty set. In fact, we know that every relation, not excluding uh, the empty one, uh, is total for its domain. Uh, and of course, the domain of the empty set of pairs is empty. But let's check it uh, in uh, detail. For each x from the empty set, there exists y, so that x, uh, y belongs to the empty set of pairs. That is, for every x, if x belongs to the empty set, then there exists such y, so that x, y belongs to the empty set. Clearly, clearly, this one is false. But this one is false as well. Uh, from falsity, it follows anything. So if we have uh, an implication where both the assumption and the conclusion are false, we may say that this implication is true. So it is true. So the empty set is both functional and total. Hence, it is a function. That's true. So we see that uh, this set is a subset of this one. When they are equal. So this, this fact partially justifies our choice of the notation b to the power a b to the power empty set it is uh, a singleton it is this equals some one element set likewise for naturals we have uh, everything uh, to the power zero equal to one is it clear excuse me a question uh, how should we know uh, that uh, it should be a singleton? Because we have proved it. No, before you proved. Before you. Proved. Aha! Before, but uh, one one of our students uh, yeah. have said it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know how uh, has he concluded it. Uh, maybe, maybe by analogy, by analogy, we know that uh, for naturals, n to the power zero equals one. So here we should have some uh, empty, s s some singleton, some one element set. Yes. So our hypothesis was implied by the analogy. And it is usually, it is the usual uh, situation in mathematics uh, when you uh, make a conjecture uh, derived from some analogy, some similarity, and then you try to prove it. Okay, and now let's see uh, three particular uh, 
and very important, of course, classes of functions. Okay. Let f be a function from a to b. Let f be a function from a to b. Then f is not injective, but injection. Uh, f is an injection from a to b, of course. It is an injection if uh, f is injective. So injective, an injective uh, function is called an injection. F is a surjection. It is a surjection from A to B, of course. If and only if F is surjective. Uh, and F is a bijection. Or it is the same as one to one correspondence. One as the same thing as one to one correspondence is a bijection from A to B if and only if F is both injective. and surjective. This definition is applicable uh, only to functions. So that is uh, F is total and functional. It is total and functional. And if it also injective and surjective, it is called a bijection. So what is injection? Injection means that our relation is functional. Functional. Total. Injective. What is surjection? That means that our relation is functional. Total as a function. Uh, and surjective. What does it mean that our relation is uh, a bijection? That means that it enjoys all four properties. It is functional and total and also injective and surjective. If it uh, enjoys all four properties, is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And now let's see some examples. Uh, do you remember what the identity relation is? This is a set of all such pairs where the first and the last coordinate are the same. It is always a bijection from A to A. For example, why this relation is injective? It's quite clear. Assume that uh, XZ and YZ belongs to the identity relation. What does it mean? That means that X equals Z and Y equals Z. Then, uh, of course, X equals Y, which is uh, needed by the definition of uh, injectivity. Why is it, say, total? 
of course, for each x from A, there exists y such that xy belongs to the identity relation. Which y can one take? S. X, of course, of course. So it is injective total, it's also clear that it is functional else objective. Why? Because you may just uh, consider the converse of it. The converse of the identity relation is? Identity. Mm -hmm. It is invariant under the converse. And what is the converse of, say, a re, uh, what is the identity relation for, say, real numbers? Which familiar function is the identity relation? Which is the graph of, of identity? Y equals this. Yeah. So this, 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 this line, uh, this one. which is given by the equation y uh, equals x. Is it clear? It is uh, by ejection. How, what, 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 does, uh, what does it mean uh, to be a by ejection, graph-wise? That means that every horizontal line has exactly one, exactly one uh, intersection with our graph. And here we have the same situation. In general, what does it mean that a function is an injection? It's quite interesting to know. Uh, a function is an injection if and only if our relation is injective. So that means that if uh, x, uh, z, and y, z belong to f, then uh, x equals y. So that means that if uh, this one means that z equals f of, uh, f of x. And this one means that z equals f of y. So injectivity of a function means that for each x and for each y, if f of x equals f of y, if this is some z, if they are equal, then x equals y. So if the values of uh, our function coincide, then the respective arguments coincide as well. And doing some logic, we see that it is the same as the following. If x differs from y, then f of x uh, differs from f of y. Is it clear? Is it clear or not? You may take f of x uh, as it's this z. Dear students, that's quite important. Is it clear or not? I think it's better to explain. Yes. Okay, and when a function is surjective, let it be a function from A to B. Surjective means for B, of course. If for each y, from B, there exists such x such that f of x equals y, which is equivalent to xy uh, belongs to f. So, and uh, now uh, some more examples. Some more examples. Okay, uh, let's see the following function s q. SQ is defined by the following equation. It is a function from reals to reals. 
uh, SQ of X is just the square of uh, X. Let's draw the graph. So it is a parabola, something like that. Uh, is it injective? By the way, you may uh, you may also say that uh, squaring is a function from reals to uh, non-negative reals. The set of all reals which are non-negative. So it is not injective. It's not an injection. Uh, why it is not injective? Okay. As we we have uh, two intersections with a horizontal line. So squ square of minus one equals square of one, while minus one, of course, differs from one. Is this thing uh, surjective? That is for non-negative numbers. Hmm? Okay. Yes, it is for non-negative. It is surjective for non-negative numbers. Why is it so? For every non-negative y, there exists x such that square of x equals y. What should I take? Uh, what can I take as this uh, x? The square root of y, of course. Is it clear? Dear students, is it clear? It's trivial. Yes. And the last example about bijections. Exponentiation. We all know exponent. Uh, X of X equals E to the power X, where E is uh, the well-known constant. What can you say about exponentiation? Is it bijective or not? Hmm? Do you know the exponentiation function? Yes. Uh, yes. So it is a function from reals where to? To strictly positive reals. Is it bijective? Is it injective? If x of x equals x of y, then e to the power x equals e to the power y from calculus. We know that this implies x being equal to y, so it is an injection. And uh, for every y, which is greater than zero, there exists x such that x of x equals y. What should I take for this x? Hmm? Natural logarithm. Of, of course, of course, of course, the logarithm of uh, y. So it is subjective. I may say that uh, x 
is a bijection from reals to positive reals. Uh, may you give an example of a bijection uh, uh, from from positive reals to reals? May you give such an example? Logarithm function. Of course, of course. Say, uh, what is the graph for the logarithm? Something like that. It is a bijection uh, from a positive reals to reals. And how is it possible to obtain one graph from the other one? Geometrically wise. Hmm? You need a symmetry. Yes. Okay. So... And the, the very last example. Uh, can you give an can you please give an example of uh, a bijection from reals to reals, but not identical? Can you please give an example of a bijection uh, from reals to reals, but not identical? Something familiar. Hmm? Say it's it. Cool. Uh -huh. Cube, of cube. course. Cube is such an example. The function cube, such that cube of x equals x to the power three. So our cube is a bijection. We have exactly one intersection of the graph with every uh, vertical line and exactly one intersection uh, of this graph with every uh, horizontal line. So that means that it is a bijection. Is it clear? Yes. So thank you. Next time uh, we will uh, explore some properties of bijections and which is more important. We will apply bijections as our main uh, tool to compare two sets uh, by their so-called number of elements, by their size. So we will define what does it mean that one set is of the same size as another one. What does it mean that one set is larger than another? So this uh, is very important. Uh, thank you. Any questions?